What's up guys, it's Lou here. Uh, this is Unbox Therapy and I've actually got a very cool video for you. This is my Nexus S, Samsung or Google Nexus S and I have been able to port over to it ice cream sandwich. This is obviously a port of the SDK that's going to be released on the upcoming Galaxy Nexus. And uh, everything is not functioning 100%, but believe it or not, most new features are. And there's quite a bit we can learn by looking at what's being implemented here. And uh, we can really get an idea, basically, of how it's going to run on this Nexus S. A lot of people are going to be waiting and hoping for that upgrade, uh, potentially on this platform, as well as other smartphones, Android smartphones, that are hoping for the update. So... The first thing you notice is this different lock screen here. We can go straight into the camera or into the unlock. We're going to go into the unlock for now. That's so that you can improve the speed of your access to the camera. Now, something you're going to notice straight away, probably one of the biggest changes is the, the way that you load the app drawer here. Uh, rather than uh, scrolling up and down, you've got left to right now. And another really nice thing is you've actually got widgets right within that space. And that includes widgets from third-party applications that you've installed. Um, another nice thing about widgets is that they are resizable, so you can select any widget. Here's a real nice scrollable Gmail widget, and then you can obviously resize that to suit your needs. As I mentioned before, it is scrollable and everything is really smooth, believe it or not. That surprised me considering the fact that this is a single core device, um, unlike uh, all those dual core devices, as well as obviously the beast that's coming out that's going to be called the Galaxy Nexus. Now, another thing that you can do in ice cream sandwiches, you can make folders. Well, you could always make folders in Android, but they look a little different and behave a little differently now. Um, all you've got to do is select an app and drop it on top of another one. And just like that, you've got a pretty little stack of applications. And then when you select it, boom, they just pop open a very nice, neat little, uh, you know, animation there. Uh, actually, by default, you've got your Google Apps down here, and uh, they're in a little stack themselves. Um, a lot of the applications have had uh, minor redesigns. Google Plus, for example, has been minorly redesigned uh, within, within Ice Cream Sandwich. Um, but uh, the main thing is that it's been implemented well across the OS for, you know, sort of updating, uh, you know, uh, from other elements, from other places, for example, the camera and so on and so forth. There's a lot of built-in functionality for Google+. Plus. The other app that has changed is YouTube. The YouTube app is now a lot lighter and brighter than it was previously. Um, it's obviously a lot darker currently on Gingerbread and, uh, or any of the older Android platforms that you might be on. Uh, this one's really clean. Everything is surprisingly smooth. You can obviously take videos and upload them to YouTube directly from here as well. Another thing that has been getting some press and uh, obviously has been getting more press on the Apple side, which is uh, voice recognition. Now, if you're in messaging, something special about this voice recognition is that it comes up instantly. Now you're probably saying, what does that mean instantly? Um, what happens is rather than sitting there and attempting to figure out what you're saying and then come up with it later, this one can do it as you're speaking. So I'm going to keep speaking and you're going to notice that it keeps on <laughs> taking down my words. It's pretty crazy actually. Um, let's go ahead and try an actual me message. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I'm done here because I'm probably talking faster than I would be if, you know, I was sending a text. Obviously, this is for the sake of this review here, but let's go ahead and try that again. I'm going to be late for the meeting. I know I said I was going to be 30 minutes. Instead, I will be one hour. I mean, there it is. It's perfect, guys. It absolutely, it absolutely nailed it. Um, it's actually pretty crazy. As long as you take a little bit of time in between your words, I mean, you can't speak as fast as I normally do, which is probably a little bit faster than usual, but it hammers it right away, and it's nice to get that immediate feedback from the device showing that it's taken it in. Now, um, all the other uh, you know, voice recognition softwares that I have tried, uh, they take a little while to think, and it, that's kind of a turnoff, even if it doesn't last too long. The browser has also got some changes within it. Um, you've got a new style of tabbed browsing. In fact, if you click this button up here, you'll see you've got these different uh, windows that I've got open. Something that you can do as well is if you click the options, 
uh, down below the options are a little different than they used to look you actually get a list now you can open incognito tabs for um you know that pr those private browsing sessions you can also save pages for offline re reading which is really cool um you just do, do do it like that and then all of a sudden that stuff's available to you if you're going down on the subway or um somewhere that you're not gonna have a connection um, some other things worth talking about the camera has seen a slight overhaul um you know, obviously it's, this is a Nexus S, so the camera is not super amazing to begin with. It can do panoramas now. Um, you know, the there's some editing functions available as well that are a little bit different. Let's see if I can show you some of those. Um, so yeah, right away you notice here if we go into landscape, you've got um, some sharing options that come up right away depending on what you've got installed on device. The device it's really easy and quick to share. If you click on the image one more time, then you're going to notice. That you get some options for editing here um, you can select uh, on this particular device you're going to have to still select the menu button you're going to get some options there including details rotate left crop if you select this edit button this is where things get new you've got some really cool little features here and um, you can toggle them with this little joystick on the right so some cool little mini editing functions for your uh, you know mini snaps kind of Instagram like features you can then save your changes and it will also save an original um, this cool little traffic widget which <laughs> I hadn't seen before and the way that it works you get a little green light you see the little green light on there telling me that my regular route to the places that I normally travel is uh, is going to be a green light and uh, if you back out uh, it'll actually give you a reading of the amount of time and estimate. There it is right there. So it'll say 35 minutes. My regular route from my current location to downtown would take 35 minutes given the current traffic situation. So a really cool widget there. Um, otherwise, you know, I mean, it's more of the same. Obviously, the fonts have all changed. The notification system has changed. Um you know, you've got some things that other launchers offered, like, uh, you know, Launcher Pro and stuff offered some of those resizable functions. The dialer has obviously changed for the phone. Um, we're going to expect new fonts coming. This, this one hasn't been completely updated. There's a lot of um, multimedia as far as pictures are concerned. Uh, contacts are all, you know, visually based, which is really cool. And, um, you know, it's just an overall more polished experience. And I think that um, once the official release comes out, it'll probably get even more polished. I'm amazed that it functions as well as it does port it in this function over here. Couple of uh, issues if you're considering doing the same thing. Bluetooth is not currently functioning on this port um, and neither is 3G data. I'm on Wi-Fi right now. So I did this port just in order to give you guys a preview, a preliminary review of what to expect on this device once the official upgrade comes out and becomes available or once the Galaxy Nexus hits and I give you guys a review on that. All right, guys, hope that helped out. Hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hopefully you can like and favorite this video. As you know, it helps me out a bunch. And until next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Later, guys.